Okay, um, I'm on my Ubuntu 1010 or Maverick Meerkat system, and I'm just looking at some of the the you know neat features. This is I'm running Compass right now, and it gives you kind of a 3D desktop cube, and you can do other things with it. And I'm gonna um right now I'm playing two videos at one time, plus I'm doing a screen capture. And just to kind of show you, I can take this one, and you can have multiple desktops. And I mean, yeah, it's a lot of fun, but the usefulness of this um, is that you can you can actually take applications and drag them to other desktops and if you do that you know if you're multitasking a lot it, it provides a neat convenient way to switch between applications very quickly plus it's just kinda cool to watch movies from a backwards and a 3D and all kinda weird um, interesting there huh um, yeah anyway um, and some of the, you know some of the other things you can do um, I'm going to play with some of the effects here if I go uh, and this is docky, you know, kind of like Apple Apple's toolbar there, but I'm going to go to the Compass uh, Configuration Manager and just some of the other options that you can choose or that you can pick um, if I choose this one instead of a, a cube I can get sort of a cylinder and again you know same thing I can switch between multiple desktops that way I like using the special effects and if you do and you minimize and maximize things it just you know adds different effects to it um, the water effect is kind of fun if I go here and I turn this on and let me see what was that? shift and control alright it turns up so let me do shift and control and you can make it rain or do sort of a ripple water effect and I'm going to stop that and then there's also the the paint effect which is kind of nice and fun to play with and let me see what the controls are okay I just hold down the control key there alright so I'm going to do that and I'm just going to write something here I'm going to hold down control and just it paints fire on your desktop That's Falcor, by the way, as, as good as I can make it. Are you... Oh, my mouse. Need a new mouse. Rules. Put a little E there. Falcor rules. As good as I can make it anyway. Yes, Falcor will never die, folks. He will live on forever and ever. No matter what you say, haha. -ha. But in this case, um, I'll go ahead and disable that feature or that effect. And if, well, actually, let me show you one more neat little effect here. If I go here, I'm just paint something there, and look at that. I can rotate the dust tube irrespective of that effect. I mean, there's just, you know, good grief. There's more than you could, more than you could possibly play with or shake a stick at there in terms of effects. And this is uh, Half-Life 2, running inside of one. <coughs> this, again, you know, kind of emulating a, a Windows environment. And uh, if you go to just, you know, Google Wine, uh, the Windows emulator software, and, and go to their website, and there's a lot of games and a lot of applications that they have tweaked to run in Linux, you know, using Wine. But if I were to, you know, say I were to start a new game, um, I'll click start new game here. I won't actually play anything. I'm trying to keep this brief, but just to kind of show you, you know, maybe what the performance is. And this is, an, you know, I'm running this on an older laptop, so it's not like a, it's a real fast machine. Oh, that guy's creepy, isn't he? 
Uh, anyway. Some of the other Windows applications I'm running under Wine are Microsoft Office Front Page 2003 and Office, um, this Exam View Test Generator software um, that I use. Um, there is, I, I couldn't find a utility that would un. Well, here, well first we'll go, you know, notice that Wine kind of emulates uh, a Windows system as far as the Program Files folder and the C drive and users and Windows and so forth. And these are all Windows programs that I have installed or set up. Like, for instance, I, I couldn't find a Linux-based program yet or open source program to decompress zipx files. But I found this one in Windows, and I can run it through Wine. So it's kind of the best of, of both worlds there. These are some of the, you know, the free open source games out there. Um, I like this one. It's, it's kind of like um, Unreal Tournament. It's called Alien Arena. It's an open source game, and you can play online. You know, there you can do land games. So. About comparable to maybe U2 2004. Possibly getting up towards maybe Unreal 3, but you know, again. If, pretty fascinating for a game produced, you know, in the open source community, and, you know, I'm screen capturing and trying to render all this 3D at the same time, so it's not a, on a pretty second-rate slow laptop, but you can kind of get an idea. Lots of open source, you know, X Scorch, which is sort of like the you know open source free version of Scorched Earth and Galaga, you know, whatever games that you like. Um, this is another one. This one's not quite as exciting as um, I don't, you know, gra graphically I don't think it's as sophisticated as Alien Arena, but um, again, just to kind of show you. Um, this is a nice application um, called Stellarium, and if you're into amateur astronomy, it's great. And it, it's funny because the, the same program, the, the same program for Windows is like I don't know, 120, 130 dollars. But I'm gonna, and you can, you know, if you're into stargazing, you can map out constellations, and you can kind of figure out what's. I'm just, you know, showing you some of the features here available. So that's, that's kind of neat software and. And then look at all the free applications and things, you know, in, in addition to the things that we've already looked at, um, there's just, you know, so many things that you, you know, in the open source community that you can use and, and install for free. Um, I've been using all of these video editors here to kind of produce some of these video clips and things I've been posting on YouTube. And again, the capture software itself that's recording right now, it's all free open source software. Um, you know, the Skype beta, it works pretty nice again. Um, you know, same thing. Um, let's see. In, in addition to Wine, you know, NetBeans. If you, if you're a programmer and you like to compile with Java or C++, you know, NetBeans is, is pretty indispensable, and it looks the same and works the same in Ubuntu as it does in, you know, in Windows. Um, one of the things that is a free download that, that, that you may want to consider installing is VMware. Um, and again, I, I see a lot of people run VMware. I'm going to boot this XP client up here. And I see a lot of people run Linux Ubuntu as a virtual machine under Windows 7. 
But if you do that, and this is just a, you know, a Snow Leopard or Mac OS 10 sex virtual machine I have, and I have a Windows 7 virtual machine, but this is my XP virtual machine. Um, if if you do that though, if, if you run Ubuntu in a virtual machine, you're not really going to get the full power of Linux, because you know it's a guest, and your if your host is Windows 7, then it's still you know consuming a huge portion of your memory and your CPU cycles and everything. Uh, on the other hand, if you choose to do the opposite, you can run Linux natively, like Linux Ubuntu, and then if you still want to use your Microsoft software, you can run that in a virtual machine over Linux, and then that way you can give Linux the benefit of the you know having access to, to the full measure of your hardware as, as far as memory and CPU cycles and graphics and things like that. Um, but yeah, I just kind of booted that up and again this VMware server it's a free download. I mean there, there are versions you can buy and pay for but the, um, there are f uh, versions available for free that you can just download and install. Um, this particular one it was a, a you know a bin file and I installed it. I had a couple of you know shell scripts that I ran to install it and it was it was pretty Pretty straightforward, n n nothing difficult as far as the, the setup process. Um, you know, there's, I mean, uh, that's about it as far as you know. Anything I can recommend to pimp your system out, um, I would install M Player, which is sort of like a media Swiss Army knife. It plays everything. I obviously, I would install VLC Media Player. Um, you know, that that plays just about everything I as far as the multimedia end goes. And then, you know, these are a lot of. I'm trying a lot of free you know, recording studio, sound editing, MIDI type softwares and things. You know, again, just all available through Synaptic.